Hi everybody and thank you for watching today's video on procrastination. Okay, today we're going to be speaking about um, exactly what procrastination is. Then we're going to be trying to have a look at why we procrastinate. And finally, we're going to be looking at how to deal with procrastination and what you can do in order to eliminate it or reduce it at least. Okay, so first of all, procrastination is when you know you have to do something, but yet you don't, okay? So you look at an assignment and you say, okay, I have to do that assignment right now, but yet you start cleaning your room or you start bringing your car to order or whatever it is, something becomes more important. It doesn't necessarily even have to be a fun task, like cleaning is not fun, but yet it becomes more important than your actual assignment. So it's a real problem with priorities there. And um, from personal experience, uh, because I've procrastinated for so many years at university, I have realized that procrastination is mostly something that's fear-based. Okay, so it's fear-based in the sense that when you look at a specific task and when you actually know you should be doing that task right now, but it's so huge, like you may have an, an entire essay to write, or you may have an entire assignment, maths assignment to do, or an entire chemical engineering assignment to do. What you look at is the, the entire you know, project and it freaks you out because you're like, wow, that's too big, you know, I can't do that. And so instead of trying to divert your energy into that specific goal, you start finding other other things are more appealing because you still have productivity so you still do something and you still feel good that you've done something but yet it will be just the your energies will not be in the correct place okay so procrastination is really fear based that's one of the things and it can also it can also be a sense of fear of uh, fear of failure in a sense because you're scared that if you put in the energy into that particular project, there is a possibility that the project will not turn out the way you want it. So you may not get the mark you desire for that particular project. And so you're in the state of mind of why try if I'm not going to get what I want. So that's also a sense of procrastination. So the ways you can actually deal with this problem is, well, first of all, is to write a plan. That's the first step of dealing with procrastination. When you've written out a plan, a plan meaning not a plan for your essay structure or a plan for your maths assignment or whatever, it's more of a plan, a kind of to-do list in a sense that you write down exactly what, you kind of take that huge mission and you break it down into smaller pieces. So I'll give you the example of an essay, for example writing up a 2000 word essay you instead of writing up a plan for the actual essay you write down the plan of what you're going to do in order to accomplish that essay to be a result okay so for example the first step may be uh, doing uh, research but not just doing research for your essay you have to be more specific than that because your brain's gonna do, gonna go onto the computer. Well, you're not, not your brain, but you're gonna go on your computer. You're gonna start scanning through the internet, and you're gonna find, you know, I'm doing my research, and it's it's gonna take you forever to do that research because you half of the time your research will be held on Facebook or something else. So you have to be very specific in these plans. You, um, for example, rather than just being very general and saying, I need to, you know, research, say, I will spend 40 minutes for research, you know, and eliminate that unlimited time. If you make it smaller, then you start being more effective. If you keep it unlimited, then you have room for procrastination. Okay, so possibly, and even even within that 40 minutes that you have to do that specific goal, you may want to even say, okay, by 40 minutes, I need to have at least five different sources of 
five different articles for this particular essay. So you make it even more specific. You not only give yourself a time, a time cap, but you also give yourself a, a task cap, which means that you have to do so and so amount of work in this specific time. And so you start becoming more effective. And after 40 minutes is gone, then you can start doing something else. Okay, so that's one step of the plan. Okay, then that could be followed by, you know, write your introduction as your next mission, as your next to do list. And after that, you can write, for example, um, you know, structure your first paragraph. That could be just the, the next thing. And you break that huge task, that huge write an essay task, which is very broad and very general, into some very specific steps. And these steps are really cool because you can start ticking them off. And once you start ticking them off, then you gain momentum. Because when you, when you uh, see that you're actually doing something, that will trigger inside you more motivation. And then you start feeling, hey, I'm actually doing something. Wow, this is really good. And that will in itself motivate you to do more and more work. And so you end up being, becoming very efficient and hopefully eliminating that motivation that you may have, that procrastination that you may have, okay? So and that's the first thing to write a plan. Once you've written a plan, um, I suggest that you, um, of course, every, between every single step that you do when you cross them out, then you reward yourself in some kind of way. So maybe you can have a break or you can work in like 40 minute intervals and then have a break in between each interval, um, do something fun. See, the thing about um, being effective is once you start doing something and it works out the, you know, once you write an essay and you write the intro, then you can really go and have a break. You can 